My name's Paul Jason and I'm the motorcycle broker. Today we're going to be riding the 1974 Kawasaki Z1A900, a legendary machine from Japan that rocked the motorcycle world. This is the road test of this Z1A900. This is a really great example. This particular motorcycle we've just restored and we're about authenticity when we restore here. We don't do shiny bikes that are shiny only for magpies. It's about absolute authenticity. There are differences between this and the 73. For example, the tank badges, they're much bigger on this one and the um, paint scheme's completely different and a different candy green to the 73 bike as well. The, they had a candy green in 73, but also the um, hand-painted graphics on the petrol tank are very different to the 73 and the 72. Um, wheel rims on this particular motorcycle they were date stamped with coded date stamps they're all correct for this month and year of production on this motorcycle the engine and frame uh, of course they're the correct ones for this motorcycle as it left the factory the front disc and the rear swing arm as well has coded date stamps on they're all correct for this motorcycle uh, we have been very careful about how we've restored it for example it's now running um, exhaust pipes that are replica pipes, so they don't have the stamps on. They're exactly the same as the original ones, except for the baffles are slightly longer. The original ones with the original date stamp, they don't last long. They rot from the inside out. So what we've done is we're taking them to pieces. We're cutting out all of the rot. We're dropping in new pieces so you won't be able to see it once they're chromed. And then we're re-chroming them and they're going to go in a bag for the owner if ever he sells it with those pipes. But at the moment, it, while it's being ridden on the road, it's far wiser to ride it with these beautiful replica pipes. The saddle is a replica cover but we do have the original cover which is in a bag going to the owner the reason we changed it was because it had a small tear in it and that tear is only ever going to get worse carburettors on these motorcycles were often swapped around for later ones because as the motorcycle developed up until 1976 it they, they refined and refined the carburettors so it became less problematic. So quite often when you buy one of these bikes, they won't have the original carburettors and they'll be very hard to find if, you, if it had the later carbs on. Air boxes are usually ditched in favour of K&Ns. They don't run better with K&Ns. They sound better, but unless you're a race tuner, it, it just doesn't make any difference. It makes them worse and they, they fill the carbs up with water as well. But it's designed to run on its original wear, air box where it runs the best. These are very torquey motors. They're great for long distances and I would happily jump on this and ride to Spain any day. You will notice on a long journey a tingle through your fingers and through your feet from vibration between 70 and 90 mile an hour. It does go after 90 mile an hour. Um, so long journeys, sometimes you get numb hands and sometimes you feel it through your feet. But it's a great bike for long journeys. The saddle is so comfortable. The handlebars, the positioning of them is fantastic. The British press slated this motorcycle saying it didn't handle and it's not really true. It does have a very long wheelbase because it was built for the American market where they don't really have that many corners. They've got straight long roads, but it does handle okay. It will 
weave a bit if you're pushing it on a corner due to the rear shocks because they're not the greatest shocks in the world and what you will find is that if you just wrestle it through the corner the bike will be fine especially with modern tires modern tires make a massive difference to the handling of all of these old motorcycles from the 1970s they didn't have the tire technology back then it will happily cruise all day long at 90 mile an hour no problem i've been over white lines on these at 120 no problem they don't go into any crazy weaves as people have claimed in the past so this particular motorcycle it has 16,700 kilometers we bought it with 16,500 put 200 kilometers on since we've restored it for the shakedown process to really get the bike absolutely as it left the factory when it was new it was an Italian motorcycle and it was completely original when we got it but everything was so tired the paint was failing in fact up by the badge on the tank on this side there was a big blister of rust here and it meant that the whole tank would need respraying being candy green it's almost impossible to match it so there's no blowing in with candies you can't do that you have to repaint the tank and to get it the same color of the side as the side panel is really hard work and talking of paint under the seat here we've recreated the original factory finish using 2k paint which is far more stable and much more durable we did the same on the frame as well we even managed to retain the original black foam in the seat. So is it a good investment? They've performed beautifully as an investment, these motorcycles. They, they only made 22,000 globally of the Z1A 900 Kawasaki. So there are very few of them left. It would be surprising if there's 12,000 of them in one piece. Many of them got broken, crashed, broken up for spares, raced, all sorts of things, turned into drag bikes, turned into custom bikes. So of that 12,000, it would be very surprising if there was, there's probably two to 3,000 investment grade motorcycles with the original parts like this one worldwide, which makes it a very rare motorcycle. When you compare that to classic cars, then these are clearly undervalued and have a lot of headroom. So that's the 1974 Kawasaki Z1A 900. My name's Paul Jason and I'm the Motorcycle Broker.